What's going on guys? Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. This one is huge. We're still talking about Eugene from California. It's about time we unbox the most insane build I've ever done. We're talking about the 40 terabyte bar top. I mean, we got some PC components in from him. Let's unbox. Let's talk about how and what is gonna happen in this build as it's gonna be the most craziest build I've ever done. Okay, so I said I got a customer, his name is Eugene, he's out in California. This is gonna be my first ever bar top, which I'm actually gonna ship fully assembled, ready to go, which I'm still a little bit nervous about, but we'll still get it done. But again, the biggest insanity with this is that we are talking about 40 terabytes. It's a huge thing. I think currently right now my system's really at 43 terabytes. Um, a lot of like bullshit though in it, to be honest. Um, I've accumulated it by other people's images and I'm really working on it as mine. As you've seen in my other builds, I've done like six terabyte builds, um, which to me is like, I took about 25 terabytes and narrowed it down to six. Because in all honesty, there are like a lot of systems and some of the systems are just pure trash and honestly, nobody has even heard of some of the systems. But again, this build that we're doing for Eugene, it's I'm going real hard on it. We're going real ham on it. Um, basically, I'm looking to include like a Wii bar for shooting games. So we're actually giving the, the shooting Wii modes. Um, you know, we have four Xbox One controllers. He bought me Xbox One controllers instead of the Xbox 360 controllers. This one's gonna be nuts. He purchased all of the PC parts. Um, I didn't really get an, a price list. He told me, Vic, just check Amazon. You'll find it on Amazon. So we're gonna go unbox. We're gonna see what he sent me. I have two out of the three. Um, in the other box is kind of like final details, like fans and the Xbox controllers. I didn't bring that with me, I left it at work. But right now, at least I could really start to assemble the main system. So now again, later on when we get this thing actually set up, I will do a live stream or a video capture of the actual hard drive because if you take a look at my like videos way in the back, um, I, was, I took somebody's like eight terabyte drive and you know that's how it really has come to it. I've gotten customers hard drives and then I basically take parts of it, the only parts that are useful, because that's the one big thing that you'll see me discuss about Hyperspin, even LaunchBox builds. There's no such thing as a plug and play. You can't simply just download something. You can't just plug it in. I've never seen it happen. It's so very intricate and every little code needs to be very specific. So that's why I, I literally tell everybody, there's no such thing as a plug and play Hyperspin build. You comment down below and tell me, yeah, Vic, I have this, yeah, Vic, I have that. But I guarantee you, you've ran into a headache somewhere along the line. So my big thing as far as me, when it comes to hyperspin builds or any PC build, I like to physically build it. I like to give you a laptop, usually it's a laptop-based system, or I like to give you an actual computer configured and done. This way you literally receive it, you plug it in, and you call it a day. There are other people that do sell hard drives that will sell it to you, you've got to download a link and all that, and who knows how big of a file you're gonna get, it might take you weeks to download it, but no matter what, something like that for me, it just, it's not right. You as a customer, I mean, everybody that I deal with, they just want it to plug in. Vic, I just wanna plug it into my TV and call it a day, like that's it. Some of these drives that you do get, you might have to sit down with a tutorial. You might need to dial, the, download some stuff. That's why I know for a fact, like for example, Pinball, you know, Vin, uh, VPIN MAM, you have to install that program into your computer. So yeah, you'll have it on your drive, but not many people or anybody will literally tell you, hey, you have to go into this folder, you have to press the download and the install and all that. So that's why for me, I'm always sticking to it. There's no such thing as a very simple plug and play hyperspin build. You will always forever get a headache out of that. Now just real quick again with the terabytes that I've done and what I've built, it, it changes every day. Every day new stuff comes in, new PC games come out, and new emulation comes out. I mean, again, with this system, I'm talking we're gonna include the Wii, the Wii remotes for some shooting stuff. As far as systems, I'm talking PS3, I'm talking Xbox 360, the regular Xbox, the PS1, um, possibly looking into now, they do have the Yuzo, uh, emulation, so possibly the Nintendo Switch. I might have a couple files on that. So again, 
this build is gonna be insane. It's gonna be ridiculous, I'm telling you. Enough of that, let's talk about what we got in our hands. So the main objective with this bar top that we're doing, we are looking for mini ATX builds so that it does fit nice and easy. I suggested to Eugene to get an Intel setup because I do like Intel. Yes, AMD right now is actually coming out like the Ryzen series is a little bit more intense with Intel. Me personally, I still like my Intel build. Maybe I'll look into the AMDs later on. But right now we're gonna unbox some stuff and discuss why we need these components for this specific build. First thing up, we do have our motherboard. It is an MSI MPG2390M. Uh, this is the Edge AC series, an LGA1151 motherboard. Um, as far as on Eugene's end, I said to him basically what we need. We need either an ITX build or a mini ITX. And he went out and got this motherboard. Apparently, if I look at Amazon right now, this motherboard came in at $180. So $180 for the motherboard. One of the big things I did tell um, Eugene if he can try when he does get the motherboard, try to get something that has Bluetooth enabled. This way you might not need the Xbox One dongle. This does have Bluetooth enabled. So for my own sake, I'm gonna probably just start writing down how much, we, uh, how much was spent so far. Oops. I'm gonna write down how much was spent so far and then we'll do a grand total at the end and then I'm not sure again as you saw the last one I did a budget beast. I named it a budget beast. Usually the names just come to me um, But let's keep unboxing. Let's see what we got and then we'll see what a grand total as far as parts list came out on this Next big piece of hardware that is a must. It is a huge must I don't care what you say it is a huge must but you do need a graphics card if you are planning to play the most recent titles Again, like you saw in my other videos with the 1050 Ti running Street Fighter V, Mortal Kombat. I mean, if you wanna play those graphic intense games, you do need a graphics card. A dedicated graphics card is not gonna cut it. It will play it, but it won't cut it for what it's meant for. So next up, we do have a 1660 Ti from the Zotec Gaming GeForce GTX. This came in at $290 for the graphics card. It is a low profile graphics card, we do need stuff compact, as again, it's going in a bar top. Now again, I'm not, I'm not playing with you guys. We're literally talking at least 40 terabytes. TB, 40 terabytes. So next up, Eugene got two of these, and he did make a very specific request, and usually the one thing I did notice now uh, with my recent uh, build, my, my Dell Optiplex that I have, is that an SSD is a big game changer. It's a huge game changer, especially when you put your operating system on an SSD. Not only do we have one, but we have, oh my God. <laughs> Not only do we have one, we have two SSDs. Um, we do have one, one terabyte for an M.2 slot. And we have a four terabyte Samsung SSD. Right here in my hands, we have five terabytes of just SSD info in our hands. I was shocked, I didn't, I thought it was two one terabytes. He literally pulled out a four terabyte and a one terabyte. The one terabyte M.2 slot SSD came in at $219. This is the big shocker. The four terabyte Samsung, apparently from what I see here, the exact coding is $650. This is a $650 hard drive. At least like with that, I mean, you're talking five terabytes of SSD. I'm gonna mostly put, honestly, the big intense stuff, probably the PS3 emulation, um, the Xbox 360 emulation, and honestly, most of the PC games on these, not to mention, again, the main uh, boot up, the Windows uh, files and all that. Also on this will be going the main hyperspin files. So all of the media, all the videos are gonna be going on these. Now as I unbox, some people are gonna say, Vic, damn, like how did you come up with 40 terabytes? Again, like I said, I'm literally probably at like 42. I currently have my drive set up on external hard drives. Uh, I use external Western Digital um, 12 terabyte drives. So four times 12, I'm at 48, but then you know once you actually get the uh, the actual, you know, you, you get a 12 terabyte drive, but really it has like 10.8 terabytes because of like files and all that, the main operating stuff. Um, so you gotta figure, 
Um, I have about 46 terabytes, I would say, or four, yeah, 45 maybe. Um, so that's where I keep all my stuff. But as we go down the line, he's got in a box right here, we literally have two 10 terabyte Seagate Barracuda Pros on these. I use these for my security surveillance system. Let's see what the price came out on that. That is two of them there. And I have another one here. So we have three 10 terabyte Barracudas. So that's 30 terabytes right here. Just looked up on Amazon. In my hands again, the 10 terabyte Seagate Barracuda Pros is $330 per drive. You're talking in my hands almost a thousand, a little bit over a thousand dollars for 30 terabytes. This right here in my hand is a thousand dollars worth of 30 terabytes. Again, I'm telling you, this is a real build. This is insane to the max. Uh, big kudos again to Eugene for being able to do this. This right now is going to blow everything out of the water. But the main reason I'm making these videos is because I need people to understand that for you to get like quality gaming, you need quality parts, you need quality stuff. Yes, I do sell a low budget hyperspin laptop. It doesn't have a graphics card. And I literally write in my ad on Craigslist and on let go and offer up that this will play Street Fighter V on ultra low settings, like pixelated to hell. Street Fighter V, it doesn't even run that smooth. This is why you need good PC components. So again, I'm not even concerned this build just based on these three items here, which is the SSDs, the motherboard and the graphics card. This build is going to be out of this world. It should play all of the emulators that I throw at it. I mean, PS3 is a pain in the ass, but you need a good computer. I'm confident with this setup that he's got going on. It will run it. Next up, we do have our cooling, nice little discreet card. We do have uh, the low profile NHL9X65. This came in at 50 bucks. Good, good cooling unit. Next up, the real main last piece that's in this box and the real heart of it all, it is our power supply. This is the Thermaltake 850, 850 watts. Looks like on Amazon, this came out to about $110, 110 just for power. The rest of this box has some, you know, little stuff, nothing too crazy, but I did not get it in the first box, but we do have the main, main essential that we do need. It is going to be running an i5 9600K. This will be overclockable. This right here uh, for our uh, CPU. Um, this should be very, very good, especially with us overclocking it. I will try to overclock it, not to the max because we don't want to, you know, burn out our PC but we will give it some good overclocking power on this. Going on Amazon right now, the processor came out to $195. Again, that is an i5 9600K. So again, as I keep unboxing, I did recommend an i5 or better. And the big thing for the PC build is our memory. We are looking at two by eight gigabytes. We're at 16 gigabytes of RAM. Um, good number, 16 is pretty good. If honestly, these are very easy to interchange. So I believe also our motherboard has four RAM slots. So if you wanted to grab another two pack of this and bring it up to 32 gigs, that's like insanity. So we do have our Vengeance LPX 16 gigabytes of RAM. And that's not a bad price. I'm looking at right now on Amazon, the RAM for 16 gigs came out to 80 bucks. Not too bad. That's a pretty good deal on RAM to be honest, $80 for 16 gigs of RAM. Now this is what's also about Eugene. Eugene is an awesome guy. I mean, I said we literally message each other on Messenger every day, it's insane. But he like goes above and beyond to think about me. I mean, he's literally baggied everything. I like his little notes. Uh, he literally left me a note inside of the drives here that literally says like, I want this to be my main boot drive and put on the four terabyte PC game. So it's like, he like, I like how he thinks, he, I like it. But he also thought about even the little stuff. I mean, we got our HDMI wire. This right here, this box is empty, so I'm gonna read back into it. HDMI, we even have like headphone splitters, which I'm not too sure what we're gonna use that for. Audio video wires. He's even gotten, it was a big deal when it came to his bar top, is that he did also give me a couple of SATR, uh, SATR, 
It also, <laughs> he also gave me a couple of SATA uh, extension cables on that. We have our Xbox dongle, which I don't think we're gonna need. And like I said, he literally went above and beyond, got me some extra stuff. In the other box, I do have two Xbox One controllers. I have a lot of fans, uh, which is a great quote when it comes to a PC build like this. I mean, this is insane, just this stuff. But as far as the mat that we're gonna show real quick, I'm gonna break down the price on this. I'm gonna mostly talk about the PC components, the real stuff. The SATA cables and all that, you gotta figure like, what, another 100, 200 bucks. The fans though, I think it did go with good fans. I think they're like 30 bucks a fan. So that's later on. Right now we're focusing on the computer because I'm gonna try to build this computer today. Again, I don't, I don't know how to title this. I still, I'm gonna try to do it. I know how I am. As I edit this video, I'm gonna come up with like an insane name. But his request for the bar top is he's looking for a Ryu versus Ken style of um, a bar top. So I'll be honest, I, I, I kinda wanna name it like based on like a super, maybe off of Ryu, maybe we'll call it the Shinku Hadouken. I don't know yet, I'll figure it out, but for right now, let's just break it down, let's do a grand total on what the PC side of this costed. <laughs> I had to like do the math like three times because I'm mind blown by this. Um, check. After adding up everything I stated, right now on the PC side alone, and again, it's mostly devoted to the terabytes, which again, terabytes, it, memory costs money. Um, my external hard drives I was talking about, um, I bought them on, I think it was Best Buy, there was a special. Um, you're talking 12 terabytes, which really brings it down to about 10.5 terabytes. I spent about 300 bucks on that. So times that by four, I spent alone $1,200 on my memory. Um, this right now, the entire grand total, just in PC parts alone, came in at a whopping $2,545. $2,545, this is not including the Xbox controllers, this isn't going into the nitty details about the fans, I didn't get the Wiimotes yet, I didn't get the bar top yet, the monitor, we didn't get that yet. He did buy the monitor though, that's the one I have on the test bench right now, he bought that. I mean again, you're talking about all this came out of his pocket, I didn't buy it, I didn't ask for a deposit because he purchased it and then he's literally sent it to me as you can see. But again, out of that price range, this is gonna be an insane beast of a machine. This is gonna be insane, buddy. And again, big kudos, thank you for letting me do what I could do and I'm totally excited for it. But real quick, some people are gonna look at the price and I go, holy shit, I'm out, I'll never do that. I understand, but keep in mind, the biggest thing is the terabytes. I have a website coming out very soon where I'm gonna let people pick and choose their own systems. But if you really, really sit down and think about it, and again, keep in mind, $650 out of that grand total is for SSDs. I mean, that's not a regular hard drive. It is faster, it will boot up faster, so keep that in mind. But alone, you're talking you're talking really two grand in memory alone and literally the hard drives. If I do the math real quick without the hard drives, just real quick, without the hard drives, we got the motherboard, we got the graphics card. Um, I'm gonna just totally disable. Oh no, I'm gonna put one. We'll put one one terabyte SSD in my total. Um, 50 for the cooler, 110, the 195, and the 80. I mean, you're at $1,124 on the PC build side alone. That's main components that you do need to run a PC. So it's 1120 bucks just for really the PC, just to get it up and running. You're talking about a one terabyte SSD card. Yes, you could take out the one terabyte and run regular hard drives like he did, but on this type of build compared to a Dell Optiplex, I mean, the performance out of this is gonna be ridiculous. It's gonna be insane. And again, you get what you pay for. Big thing again, you're gonna look at an old video, which is Morris's bar top. That bar top was awesome. I love that one. We used a Dell Optiplex. That was the budget beast. That was the cheapest of cheapest that I could do. Again, out of this right now, you're looking at $1,100 alone in PC components, alone. The Dell Optiplex build, I believe, after everything, everything though, with like the hard drive and all that, I think it came out to about 1,000, but I think that was with the bar tops. I don't really remember my math, but I do remember that the Dell Optiplex costed me like 350 bucks. That came with like a one terabyte and that was just like stock. 
So, you know, for 310 for a Dell Optiplex is not that bad. And as you can see in that video, we made it work. The biggest thing though is that you did need a graphics card. It did need it, but it wasn't overclockable. You couldn't overclock it. I think it had 16 gigs of RAM on that. But again, I've seen that build. It literally took, and you can see in the videos, it takes about maybe five minutes to boot up, meaning it would go to desktop. But in the background of the desktop, there is stuff that's floating up, such as the GTX GeForce in the background. So with this build, I mean, we should see boot up times like literally within like 30 seconds. It should be insane. So again, you get what you pay for. On that note, VigVP Game Case Arcades, Eugene buddy, I'm so excited. I'm gonna start building this and I'm gonna message you as far as the main systems that we want.